Good evening, how are you? My name is Patty Lee. I am the host of Patty Lee TV here on BNN. Thank you for tuning in and letting me come into um, your living rooms or wherever you may be. I wanted to make a couple of announcements uh, for this weekend. At Lion of Judah, there will be a CAP conference. You will see um, more information about CAP conference. Uh, hosted by Pure Spring Institute Ministry Global Commission. Uh, CAP is the Community of Apostolic and Prophetic pa Practice. The keynote speaker will be Bishop Harry Jackson, the presiding bishop, ICE Churches. The signature session speaker is Dr. Roberto S. Miranda, the senior pastor of Congregation Line of Judah. Um, this is a leadership conference and it is June 26th and 27th, which is tomorrow, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. and Saturday, 8.30 to 6 p.m. Uh, the conference hosts are Ronald, um, pastors Ronald and Kathleen Verna. They're apostolic co-founders of Pure Spring Global Commission. Uh, come out and enjoy the day and receive prayer and be commissioned into what God has purposed for your life. Um, the next announcement is the Cooperative Metropolitan Ministries Interfaith Youth Initiative 2015 Summer Program, uh, rooted in faith, reaching out in love. This will be July 26th to August 2nd at Brandeis University in Waltham, Mass. I believe there still are scholarships available F I F Y I is a unique experience for youth empowerment, leadership development, interfaith education, and peacemaker training. Participate of diverse religious backgrounds, come together for a joyful and intensive overnight immersion program that includes community building, workshop, service, and social action experiences, field trips, theological dialogue, and much more. Uh, and more, we'll give more information about um, this summer initiative and the opportunities, how you can get in touch with Cooperative Metropolitan Ministries and sign up youth so that we can all know how to get along. And I have the awesome opportunity this evening to be um, with the Executive Director of Cooperative Metropolitan Ministries and the founder of uh, Pathway to Redemption. Thank you so much for being here with me on the set, Thank Dr. You, Patty. Peterson. Thank you, Thank you. Mr. Lewis. Yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, Dr. Peterson, could you please tell us a little bit more about uh, Cooperative Metropolitan Ministries, when it was founded and why it was founded? Sure, uh, Patty, what an opportunity to do so on this program. Cooperative Metropolitan Ministries was founded for 49 years ago. So we're going into our 50th year. Congratulations. We're, we're rejoicing. That's excellent, excellent. <laughs> it's Boston's oldest interfaith social service network. We're composed of about 100 churches, mosques, and synagogues. And we have over 4,000 people that receive our uh, biweekly newsletter. So it's a wonderful opportunity to convey our message to the city of Boston. I see. Wow. So you have uh, a lot of different initiatives like the Interfaith Youth Initiative that um, embraces young people so they can have better understanding of different religions. Or right. Religion. If I were to encapsulate in a word or two what we do, I would focus on three things. Okay. First of all, interfaith issues. Secondly, social service action. And thirdly, Rua spirituality. Now, okay. what are those things? Right, yes. <laughs> well, the uh, interfaith activity is really designed with two tracks in mind. One for youth, the Interfaith Youth Initiative, and a second for religious leaders, pastors, and interested lay people. 
and we call that program ICE. Ice, or, nice. Uh, ice, nice, right? <laughs> uh, the, I'm not going to start dancing. No. Uh, well, you could ice if you nice, want. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, the uh, interfaith uh, continuing education for clergy and religious leaders. I see. In a sense, it's for adults what IFYI is for youth. Now, that youth program is open to all youth in high school and early college years. I see. It's an on-site, uh, on-campus retreat, uh, camping experience at Brandeis University in which youth are encouraged to share with one another their deepest faith commitments and issues, learn how to relate to one another in our very complex world, and also leadership development. Wow, that's very exciting, especially at a time like this where we're seeing so many differences between people groups and the United States in general and so to have bridges like that so that we can have understanding and um, open communication uh, and teach the children how to do that well I'm saying children but young adults um, is an awesome opportunity so if you do know any youth please uh, get in touch with Cooperative Metropolitan Ministries I believe there are scholarships available they're able mm -hmm. to go to a beautiful Brandeis campus for a week um, get to know uh, the different ministries, the people that are in our community. Um, so I think that is an awesome, awesome... If I could just say one sure. thing more in terms of the leadership of the program, okay. in addition to myself and our other professional staff, we'll have 10 uh, theological students working with us and with the youth. Those are theological students from Muslim, Christian, Pentecostal, and wow. Protestant and Roman Catholic, mm -hmm. Jewish, Buddhist traditions, all working together, all listening to one another and trying to craft a peaceful world in front of us. Wow, wow, that's a huge initiative. Uh, we with, expect uh, about 40 to 50 youth. Okay, yeah. okay, beautiful. And you said they're all different faiths that are gonna be interacting with the youth. Yes, there are. We've been doing this for 10 years now. We're in our 10th okay. year, and the program has been highly successful. We're also seeking to move it from beyond just a week's experience, which it is right now, to a year-round experience if, in so far as we can do that. Okay. Is there anything that happens after the retreat? Yes, there's a follow-up retreat in September. There's activity that we promote at the Martin Luther King Volunteer Day and then for Earth Day. So those are the chief nodal points at this point. Last year we had over 300 youth involved in the wow. Martin Luther King Volunteer Day and these youth made 12,000 meals for the homeless. Wow, beautiful. Where was that? That was also held at Brandeis University. Oh, wow. So there are other activities that the kids get involved in like that but our real focus for intention, intentionality and learning is this one week experience, the last week of July. Okay, okay. And they can get in touch or email Cooperative Metropolitan Ministries? Absolutely, that's right. What is the email? Info. Info. At coopmet, C-O-O-P-M-E-T dot org. Okay, and I believe there's also a phone number for Cooperative Metropolitan Ministries. You can give a call um, to them and reach out or email at info at coopmet, M-E-T, like Mary Edgar Teresa dot org. Yes. And <clears throat> so that would be a, a great opportunity for any youth that are interested in uh, getting to know different cultures, different faiths, and um, a springboard to uh, so much that the city offers. Oh, sure. And if you have one or two youth that would like to come, maybe from your home, encourage them to bring a friend. Mm -hmm. It's always easier when you go on an overnight venture to go on one with a friend. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a great idea. So that's some of the interfaith work. Then we're a social service network. CMM, Cooperative Metropolitan Ministries, has been responsible for uh, helping to found the Boston Food Bank, wow. homeless initiatives throughout the city of Boston, Rosie's Place, and a number of other interesting, interesting facets from our past. Oh, wow, that's beautiful. 
Um, Kip unfortunately died, I think, a couple of weeks ago, mm. or I mean, years ago. But um, those are big initiatives here in Boston, and they've been running for a long time. Well, we've been running for 49 years. Well, we'll see what the running. 50th does. Yes, yes, <laughs> that's exciting. Well, we all know that um, we're also here with Robert Lewis, and you are from Pathway to Redemption. If you could uh, talk a little bit about Pathway to Redemption and how that initiative started. Okay, first of all, I want to thank you. Um, mm -hmm. I've watched your show a number of times, and it's, it's such an um, um, impactful show. Um, you, do, you. you do a really good job. We've been trying to do this for a while, and I feel grateful to be sitting here, uh, what I call my mentor, in a lot of ways yeah. on, on learning you know, this, this work that we're trying to do. Pathway to Redemption uh, stemmed out of a lot of things. It, it really stemmed out of um, you know, wanting, wanting a, a, a reentry group. We're a spiritually-led group. Um, my, my basis to find it was that um, I started this in, in Dudley Station about five years ago. And I, and I said, I want a, a, a program um, right in the heart of the city. Right. Nine, probably, you know, probably 90% of a lot of traffic goes through Dudley Station. So what we try to do, we started out uh, really meeting these guys that was coming out, um, coming addressing out. it. I'm sorry, we, we, working with uh, <coughs> returning citizens coming out of prison, coming out of incarceration. Okay. Um, Addressing a lot of needs uh, around uh, obstacles to um, jobs, obstacles to housing, um, obstacles of just really even getting integrated back into their family. Mm -hmm. um, Pathways uh, has done a lot of work around um, how do we center the family around that missing peach was the male. Um, right. You know, we're in a time right now where um, probably 68% of um, <laughs> Um, Sixty-eight percent of uh, individuals that's in lockup right now are fathers, wow. and, it's, and it's, a, it's a heavy issue. And, and one of the things that really drove me with Pathways was one, you know, I've always worked with youth, um, and you know, we've had a lot of success. Can you know, I ask you how many years have you been oh working boy. with youth? Oh uh, boy, I hate to date myself. Probably okay. the last twenty-five years or more. Mm -hmm. um, okay. That I've always found myself. You know, um, you know, I thought that I, I, I feel like that's always been my calling um, to be able to motivate and inspire and different things like that. So Pathway was an extension of my, <laughs> my youth program that I started, Hoops Excellence. Oh, beautiful. Yes, and Hoops mm -hmm. Excellence would travel the country playing, you know, um, AAU basketball and mentoring. Wow. Um, and it stemmed out of that, you know. And, and as my, what I found out how uh, as, the, as the young men got older, the streets began to kind of call a few of them. I mean, the streets began to play out because not only you could you couldn't navigate through the streets right. as easy as before. Uh, so Pathway wanted to address some of the, the issues of. I remember back in my day, you know, if you was a ball player, um, you know, you got a pass to walk, you know, to go through the streets. Hey, man, right. he's a ball player, you know. Leave but it's no longer that. Right. You know, so we have to offer more. You know, right. so Pathway to Redemption was an opportunity to offer more. Okay. Okay, so you're centered now in in Dudley again. Um, I oh, spent two and a half years in Dudley. <clears throat> um, for the last two and a half years, I've been in Mattapan. Okay. Um, and one of the things that really attracted me to Mattapan is that they're probably home to three of the largest churches. Um, right. And you know, one thing when I look back at what we did the first couple of years. Um, I had to reevaluate, um, and I wanted these young men to come out of some kind of pastoral leadership, and I think that was the key. I, I think the key to change a lot of times is, you know, um, you know, changing your heart and giving you a different, you know, giving you a different pathway um, mm -hmm. to thinking, um, um, looking at your behavior, you know, and that support. You know, I think the grounding piece that I always believe is that the community has to be invested also. You know, right. not just a nonprofit. We got to have the churches. We got to have the health centers. We got to have collaborations that right. we'll, we'll talk about a little bit later. Right, right. Okay. Now that you talk about collaboration, how did you <laughs> meet with uh, oh. Dr. Peterson? And n now there's like a, a new baby in an incubator <laughs> right now. Or? Well, I had the privilege <clears throat> of meeting uh, Dr. Peterson this year. Okay. Um, 
um, Dr. Alice Kidder, uh, um, that was the former executive director for uh, Cooperative Metropolitan Ministry. I met her maybe about four years ago, and I okay. met her through a, a, a colleague of mine, Paris, um, and speaking with her, she invited me to speak at, at Brandeis University okay. uh, and, and on Martin Luther King Day, and it was one of the, the best honors I really had. And the topic was um, talking about trauma and talking about um, the difference between trauma and bullying in the urban community versus, I mean, the urban community, how they handle it in the suburban community. So that's how we kind of met um, about uh, cooperative ministries and just doing all the work that they've done over the years. I said, wow, this is a great opportunity for me to expand the work that I'm doing and right. get a different perspective of things out, you know, um, out in the suburbs. Wow, beautiful, beautiful. Well, I'm glad that um, you both met and I'm glad that you both are, are working together and um, bringing things forward because of just the, I, I see both of you are people that make social transformation in our community your focal point. Well, it really is thanks in part to Dr. Kidder. I'm glad that Robert has mentioned her. Uh, she wishes she could have been here today, um, but it was uh, through Dr. Kidder that we first met each other, mm -hmm. and uh, she is an amazing woman here in the city of Boston. I was very glad when Counselor uh, Charles Yancey uh, brought up a motion before the Boston City Council to declare March 23rd mm. the, the Alice E. Kidder Day. Really beautiful. <laughs> and uh, he Ooh. was present, gave her an award and everything. Beautiful. Uh, Robert had a, had a little bit in making that happen. Beautiful, and, um, beautiful. So she really has to be given a lot of credit. Yes, she drew thank us you together. so much, Miss, Miss Kidder, for making our community your uh, heart to change things, to see peace, and, and so many other um, injustices addressed. Um, I think what drew Robert and me together, if I can say it, you can feel free to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> Disagreement is good on a program, right? Yeah, that's fine. Um, is the commitment that we each have towards values, mm -hmm. values in life. What are our values? Uh, respect, tolerance, grounding in a solid spirituality. Uh, I could go on, but you know, um, these really are important today and important to inculcate in the lives of our youth and in the lives of so many other people. And we're committed to that kind of empathetic learning that enables forgiveness to happen. We'll talk more about that later. But I think also we're both committed to social justice, certainly from my position at CMM, from Robert's commitments. I've worked in the prison system here in Boston and many different fa facets of it and facilities. Wow. And we're committed to seeing justice done for people and to learn to walk with two strong legs, one forgiveness and one justice, is I think an important commitment that we each share. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, you know, the, the city, in this country is 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 right now in, in a um, it's in a place where where it, people are so sensitive and, and you know whether it's anger and it's sadness and it's joy. I mean, I, I think for us to come together at this time um, with all the great work that's going on, I think what we're trying to put together now, how we're merging these two worlds of um, co-op uh, CMM and pathways. I, I think. What we're doing here is teaching folks that you have to do it together. Right. I mean, there's no else way around it. Right, right. Our unity is very important, mm -hmm. and it takes a community to be able to uh, address a lot of these issues. I know you both probably know I lost my son in 2013, mm -hmm. and um, I'm so grateful for my pastors, um, for all of the different people that mm -hmm. I have um, met um, that have stood by my side um, from different faiths, from different walks, black, white, Hispanic, Asian. Um, it didn't matter because we're a, a community. We're human beings mm -hmm. first before anything else. And um, unfortunately, you know, I know that racial divide is something that um, 
makes us weak, you know, even in, in faith divides and, you know, um, but when we come together and, and we're able to look at truths and both sides, um, you know, what, what are our perspectives and how can we make a better place and community for ourselves? Um, if, if that could be our focal point and if we could get our minds off of revenge and just so many different things. And it, it was really hard for me um, to say, you know, I'm not going to feed into my anger or to my re resentment and, you know, it's a process. But fortunately, I have so much community around me to help mm. me. Um, and, um, but this is something that is, is very traumatic and egregious and has catapulted me here onto this platform um, with you. It's such an <laughs> honor to be here with you, you know, and I thank you. And um, we're going to segue into a, a PSA. I created this in um, honor of my son, and then we will uh, be back after a five-minute rolling. Okay. What's up, man? You left some leaves burning out here. Yeah, I, I just I, there was a I had just came in just for a second. Come on, man. If it's too hot to touch, it's too hot to leave. You could torch the whole neighborhood. It's a good point. There's smoke. Key. Nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans. Only you can prevent wildfires. If you drive buzzed. It could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Force. Forgiveness is not denying the pain you are having. Forgiveness is not going to hack the offender. Forgiveness is, is, is a reconstruction right. of your own self. And let me tell you, you know, I'm so impressed in the last uh, 15 years that I have been working with this, that when you offer to a victim the possibility of forgiveness, there is a kind of neuro neuronal revolution. Yeah. And especially when people are able to forgive, and forgiveness is a decision that you have to take. You know, re people really change. I'm so happy that Tanya and, and her daughter is here because they are a living example of forgiveness. Both, I have not met you, but I want to give a hug. <laughs> <You later. laughs> they are living examples of forgiveness. And you know, you are going to help me to make a dream reality. Yeah. You know, I want to bring here a lot of ex-combatants who have been since they were 13, yeah. 12, 13, 14, yeah. and they went out when they were 28 or 30, and they have managed even to forgive themselves because they have killed people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because they have, as they say, we have lost 
15, 20 years of my life doing the bad things. Mm -hmm. okay. I would like to bring here some combatants and you will help us to meet with perhaps some of these gang Absolutely. leaders. Absolutely. For them to understand the big lesson that we have learned, mm -hmm. that arms are the failure of Imagination. And our words, words. words. our words. capacity words. to use our words. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Ex combatants, ex victimizers yeah. to meet with others who possibly are on the way to. So I'm so happy that there is a group of you kind of learning this methodology. And I, I'm, I, I was praying today that you are going to be the powerful seeds of teaching others. Yeah. The revolution of forgiveness. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Tanya, you know, there is a revolution going on in the world. Mm -hmm. Very subtle and very silent. And this is a kind of, there, there is a kind of evolutionary moment in humanity, by which we are making very important changes, very important changes. So we are moving from punitive justice, we are moving towards restorative justice. We are moving from accumulating things to giving things. And that's why we call forgiveness. You know, the, the, the word in English is so powerful because life is forgiving, not for taking. And you know, and the people who are able to forgive, they are a powerful testimony to the capacity we have as humans to give. The great secret of life is the capacity is when you discover the capacity that you have to give, not to take. And when you are able to forgive, you bring out the God which is inside you. So I want to, to tell you that I, have be, I, have, I am working in more than, as I said, 18 countries, including some countries in Africa. Also, Spain and, and sorry, Portugal and Italy in Europe, and um, we would like really to 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 have people from Boston join in this big network, which is is kind of growing in, in the world, making the revolution of forgiveness. Absolutely. And um, I, I'm inviting the, the the group to to be part of a network. It's like when you, when somebody puts a chain here and keeps you pulling just back to your past. That's right. And forgiveness is the capacity to cut the chain Amen. and project yourself yeah. towards the future. So, yeah. please, to all these gangs and young people, do not take them as offenders right. Right. or victimizers. They are real victims of our society. Exactly. That's why we have to treat them with, with kindness, with bounty, mm, yeah. with restoration, That's right. not with punishment. That's right. And I really, I really invite those of you who have the power to influence politicians, mm -hmm. as we did in Colombia, to go to Congress and pass. Hi, my name is Patty Lee and this is Patty Lee TV. You just watched a uh, roll-in that was conducted um, by Father Leonel uh, from Colombia. And I have the people that brought him here, um, CMM Executive Director of Cooperative Metropolitan Ministries um, Executive Director, uh, Ronnie Peterson and Pathway to Redemption. Robert Lewis, thank you so much for being here. It's an honor, and I thank you for all of the work and the efforts that you have been 
putting forward to address a lot of the issues that are happening in our community with uh, forgiveness and with restorative justice. Thank you. I don't know if you want to talk about, um, you know, who helped kind of bring this initiative to Boston and what's been going on in the last few months and um, if you want to recognize anybody and what's going on now. That's well, a lot. <laughs> you, you want to talk about the, the beginning? For sure, I'll go ahead now. and begin and then you <laughs> chime in and correct me. Um, after being introduced to one another by Dr. Alice Kidder, we began to work with Paris Swindoll and a variety of other folks from our different organizations to put together a program that weds together justice and emotional literacy defined as forgiveness and reconciliation. And we sent out a call, Robert did a tremendous job in doing this, to community persons, agencies, et cetera, as to who would be interested in becoming involved. Well, we had almost 60 people, wow. plus representatives from the AG office, the mayor's office, and the police show up as interested. Well, we, through a certain winnowing process, we said, okay, we'll take 15 people and train them, but then we ended up taking 24 people for training. Wow. And those 24 people have just graduated from a program, 10 weeks, eight to 10 weeks in length, depending on how you count. Right. <laughs> and have been graduated to be trainers of trainees in this program. We hope to wash over the city of Boston a wave effect of forgiveness and reconciliation. Yeah. You know, Patty, we're stuck. We're stuck as a nation, we're stuck as a city. We don't know how to move the civil rights discussion forward, much less any of the other global issues. Right. I'm convinced that forgiveness and justice, those two concepts wed together, will give us a way forward. One more point, and then I'll pass the torch to my brother here. Okay. And that is, uh, I was at the Cooper Center a couple days ago, talking with the staff there and the people that run the center here in Roxbury. And I was talking about our Values Over Violence program, and one of the people came up to me and said, you know, the big problem with being stuck, we don't know how to forgive ourselves. Wow. Let me give you a little story. I first learned forgiveness in Ghana. I brought a group of students, this is when I was working as director of the Boston Theological Institute. I brought a group of 25 students to South Africa and then Ghana. In Ghana, we visited all the Cape Coast castles, at least a few of them. And we were set to visit some more Cape Coast castles, these dungeons of terrible historical memory. And the African Americans wanted to visit another Cape Coast castle the Anglo-Americans wanted to visit an ecological park. Okay. I mean, it was a wrenching experience in right. the bus. Thankfully, the heavens just opened up and it poured. Good. So we couldn't do either. <laughs> so we went to the Acrofi Christeller Memorial Institute where we were staying, which is a center for the indigenization of Christianity in Africa. And we went to bed, got up the next morning, and we began the day with a Bible study, something you might find in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Mm. It was powerful, though. And the native Ghanaians came over to the African Americans in our group, and they said, we want to ask your forgiveness mm -hmm. for having sold your ancestors into slavery. Mm -hmm. Wow, was that powerful. There was not a dry eye in the room. Obviously, then Anglo-Americans or white Americans got up and asked forgiveness of their African-American brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. This is what forgiveness is all about, admitting that I did something wrong and I seek your forgiveness and then going out and practicing it in all the different domain of life. Great. Um, <clears throat> I, I was just um, reflecting back when um, you know, Father Leonel came here. And it was an awesome, awesome experience. You know, we, we got to um, uh, do the presentation at Northeastern. Um, we got an opportunity that morning for him to meet the commissioner, Bill Evans, wow. um, and talked about the differences and, you know, and, and him speaking, uh, Father speaking about how just in that maybe 45 minutes how Boston is doing a lot of the great things and wishing that they had some of these things in um, Bogota, but it was a it was an awesome experience listening. Uh, right after that, 
uh, we took two cabs and we went mm-hmm. off to City Hall, you know, and um, met with the mayor, you know, wow. Mayor, mayor Walsh, and he, you know, opened up, opened up with open arms and, and actually gave him a, um, um, certificate. a certificate, wow. welcoming him to Boston <laughs> and really the help that, you know, just great for him to come across the world and talk about, you know, how can we get do things better here and across this nation. So it, it was a very special time. Um, Values over violence is, you know, I remember when um, Dr. Kidder uh, kind of put it in my lap and I began to read it. And uh, like I said, I've been doing this work for a long time. Uh, and I don't even call it work. It's just my life duty. Right. Um, but it was something different, you know. Uh, like I said, I worked in DYS. I worked in the prison. I worked street workers, gang work, and all that right. stuff. But it was something about, you know, there's values. Um, you know, like I said, we, you know, Boston is really uh, reeling right now from this young man that just got killed. And when you think about, you know, these are three lives that are, that are damaged and one is gone, you know. Right. But thinking about, you know, what it, what it takes to have values. Um, you know, what this curriculum does, just to talk a little bit about the graduation, we won at 15, but we end up 23 because we had compelling people. We had compelling people like yourself that have lost loved ones and young men uh, to murder. Um, that wanted some answers within, you know, right. what this curriculum does is address some of those things. It digs deep, and it's a tool to be able to um, uh, kind of understand where that rage or where that, that, that sadness, where that comes from. Um, so it, it's a powerful, impactful tool that we're trying to do. Like I said, we had eight to ten weeks. We could have went on for another ten weeks. Right, yeah, um, no, we could The people that we chose was has done this and lived the life, so uh, it's a powerful thing. You know, one thing that has been my wish from day one is that I want this whole city, you know, we, we got some things planned. We're going to do a, um, a three-on-three tournament to help recruit some folks. Uh, we got a, a, a bike-a-thon plan, and I want Beautiful. this this whole phrase to talk about values over violence right. and talking about forgiveness um, and reconciliation right. and, and justice. And what does that mean? You know, right. how, do, how do you get to a point? Because uh, I think every one of us has someone to be forgiven right. and someone to forgive, mm-hmm. right. you know, in our personal life, you know. And, um, you know, the great thing about, you know, um, for me, uh, first time I've done it, and, and being under Dr. Peterson's tutelage, it's really learning the whole, like, it's, it's, it's ten modules? Ten modules. Yes. Ten modules. Um, we did, you know, Lighting of the Torch and doc- right. coming out of darkness. So it was a very powerful piece. And, you know, we want this to radiate throughout, you know, um, the city. You know, and I was thinking, wait a minute. We have to take the opportunity to edu- right. educate Boston on what we're doing. Right. Um, and, and like I said, and, and having, um, you know, the, 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 the great blessing to have great collaborations uh, with Black Minister Alliance. We, we have uh, Boston Ten Point, uh, Future Hope Apprentice, uh, yourself. You know, one of the things that, you know, we're in the process. We've been grateful to be able to uh, get some funding uh, from the Attorney General. Um, that seeing um, the worth of what we're trying to do or right. what we're doing. Right. Um, you're one of our best candidates in some Thank of the things you that so you do much. here. Thank um, you so much. I appreciate it. So, and what that. do you do here, guy? You, you've got well, young I'm a folks. Host, yes. You know, and I've also done like the editing classes. And, um, but I think platform is important. How do you use the radio? How do you use the TV to mm-hmm. express yourself, where you're coming from? How to. How do you take the arts and, and, and say this is what's going on with me instead of at reacting violently? You know, mm-hmm. how do I bring my community <laughs> together? So for me, Values Over Violence was powerful. It helped me to walk through a lot of the emotions that I felt. And how do I feel about restorative justice and bringing my community together to remember the young people and all the purpose that has been lost because of the shootings, I don't. I think people kind of, um, or the young people, are so detached, kind of to, yeah. you know, the purpose of people yeah. and the, per, the their purpose and yeah. you know their their friends' purpose and yeah. you know and then just walking in fear and there are just so many things that I I I love this program and I'm so happy that the attorney general has you know given money an opportunity that, you know, young people will be able to work with, 
um, Ten Point Coalition, Future Hope Apprenticeship Program, you so, and... Right, and one of the things that we do, we, we actually had a long day starting this morning where we interviewed three people today for possibility of taking on some young folks mm -hmm. for a job. Um, and, I, and I think the, the, the whole essence of, of what we're trying to do is be able to, one, this summer here, we all know what the summer brings. You know, it's no right. expectation. What, what summer brings heat, bring, bring rage, get this. If we can keep these young folks busy in right. learning something, I like, you know, what you're proposing to do, that you're training these young men for not just a job, but for a career. Right. We've lined up mm -hmm. different kind of agencies. We, we have, um, and, and thank the Paris, we, we have some, some, um, uh, some, property managers and we have some construction companies Beautiful. that want to get involved Beautiful. you know because like I said it takes everybody to be involved right. um, and this is just the, the, the beginning right um, we're, we're seeking Excellent. other funding um, right. you know we, we encourage people to kind of get a board right. you know and you know we're, we're, we're saying this is a project you know because yeah. what a project does is allow other people to kind of in, in, in infuse in this come. whole piece we do have another a, a number of grants out uh, with a number of different agencies here in Boston, but I also want to thank the Episcopal City Mission, as well as a number of private donors who have given money anonymously to support the program. Beautiful. You know, it was a wise man, Desmond Tutu, who wrote the book, No Future Without Forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And what you had in the role with uh, Father Lionel really illustrated that, uh, ways right. the importance of cutting the chain that keeps pulling us back. Right. And, and so that we can walk forward into something new. You know, I'm convinced as we think of the justice question that we cannot have competing justices, but justice needs to grow out of truth. And truth only happens as you and I, as we dialogue together right. and we build truth. Truth doesn't just happen. We build right. it together out of our different social experiences. Yeah. And as we build that truth, then we can become committed to promoting justice. Hopefully, as you've said, that's a restoring justice, not a retributive justice. Right. Or punitive justice. Or punitive justice, yeah. that's right. Mm -hmm. I, I really appreciate um, what you're doing. And if you would like to um, maybe donate money if you're a company or a business and you want to give a donation to um, a youth this summer, employ them, you know, sometimes we need to take action and put um, a little money to the, to our, our words. And um, let's, let's fuel um, this effort. And you can get in touch with Dr. Uh, Rodney Peterson. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Well, if you would like more information on how you can help, you can um, contact uh, Cooperative Metropolitan Ministries or uh, Pathway to Redemption at, um, is it info at Pathway? Well, mine says pathway, pathway 724 at gmail.com. At gmail.com, how you can help and become involved and even um, employ a young person, train them up, um, but learn how you can get involved and be a part of the solution in a, a city that is so rich and, and resourceful in so mm -hmm. many different ways. And I want to say this before we close. I, I think one of the things that makes this, um, you know, um, special, I, I won't say different, but special because we have people that understand what we're doing. We have a new attorney general right. that, that, that says that, wow, this is great. You know, let, how can we help the community? Right. We have a mayor, as we know, that, that is implementing all type of things about how can we raise the level of expectation for our young men, uh, our young men and boys of color. We have a commission that's out there. We was just at a meeting last night that's meeting the community where they're at. And then we have people like you. We have people like you that, like, like this is what we do. Right. Um, and I think, you know, this summer is going to be a successful summer. Yes, um, uh, because people are moving, people want the same thing that, you know, right. stop the hurt. You know, we think, right. you know, I was just having a conversation with someone, you know, like one of the things with young folks is just trying to stop the hurt and find out where it's at and right. turn it on or turn it off. You know? Right, and, um, right. You know, we're always transparent on that. You know, I think, we, you know, I always, you know, when I do the groups, I, I transparent my whole life, you know, I, um, about doing. 
Robert, if I can just make a closing statement also, Patty. Um, what we're talking about here has been focused, has been with a certain focus on Mattapan, Dorchester, the city of Boston. But what we're saying is not limited to the city of Boston. Right. Right. Yesterday I met with a coalition of churches out in Concord, and they said we need values over violence right. also. Right. We met just recently with a uh, young, lovely young uh, Muslim woman from Pakistan. She said, this is what I need in mm -hmm. Pakistan, and it's what I need in Lowell and in other areas where there are different communities of people. So what we're talking about is not something that's limited to a particular group of people, but it really is a human necessity. Mm. Excellent. It is. And um, I think that uh, just to be able to kind of change people's mind, because I know a lot of the modules help me to change my mind, that I need to look at the other person's perspective, like the big bad wolf. That's mm. <laughs> one of the stories that I really admired. Um, and, and just to, to see how, um, or, or to change the story and to give, for me, I, I, I think it's um, an awesome opportunity to help someone voice how they feel. Mm -hmm. You know, where are you coming from? Why are you doing what you're doing? And h how does violence affect you through the media? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think media is very powerful. Mm -hmm. um, when we look at a country where there's so much violence on our television sets or wherever, um, and always seeking vengeance, how do I take mm -hmm. my platform and change that? And how can I teach young people to do the same thing and empower them so that they don't have to consume so much trash. That's, anyway, what I, I feel it is. I think you have an agenda outlined for your television I program. I really do think so. <laughs> and, and, you know, mm -hmm. al along with Dr. Peel was saying, you know, we've had requests for, for going into schools. Oh, beautiful. Um, you know, going to the churches, um, doing this curriculum. And, and, and it's just, a, it's just a, you know, um, with today, with these young folks, I think we need something a little bit different than what we've been having. Right. And, you know, values over violence, forgiveness and reconciliation, like I said, all the work that I've been doing, this is just quite, it, it, it tips the scale just a little bit more. We go in and we're able to nurture them through that, though. Right, so, right. We have a lot of vision on what we want to do. Right. I know Father Leonel had um, touched the topic of our education system, uh, and that's mm -hmm. something that needed to be addressed as well, how yeah. we deal with our children, how mm -hmm. we teach them, and not to be punitive. And mm -hmm. I know that's, that's a big this kind of... Yeah, and, and this, if I can break in, th sure. this curriculum that we're using is used in almost 20 nations. Mm -hmm. Wow. And in the country of Colombia, over 90,000 people have been trained in training the trainer type programs like what we're trying to do here in Boston. Right. So that's not Lionel teaching 90,000 people, but right. that's uh, the wave effect that wow. we hope to create here as there. And the curriculum has received a UNESCO prize a number of years ago, wow. and the government of Columbia Beautiful. has specifically cited this work as being valuable and important to reducing violence. Yes, he, he gave a number of, I think it was 56,000 58,000. Guns. Combatants, right? Combatants, yes. but non-combatants, non right. non yes. so they didn't go back yes. to the violent yes. way. Right. So it yes. actually did have a good output, and, you know, yes. they, they mm. were able to measure that, which I think is, that's a lot of numbers. That's a lot of people, right, 58,000? Right. And what I feel good about, there's only been, there's only been, it's only been in two, two other states in the United States. It's been in Texas and Oregon that I believe, mm -hmm. and now we have it in Boston. Mm -hmm. You know, so so right. we've always been, um, you know, ahead of the curb on a lot of things. So we're just grateful to have it here and having, you know, like when you think about it, we have, uh, this is an international thing that right. we're doing here. Yeah. And that, you know, it's not just the United States that, you know, we're, we're planning on a trip to go to Bogota. You know, mm -hmm. that is my goal to be there. And I want to I want to see how it's done. You know, right. I want to feel how it's done. You know, so that's some of the things. Um, going down to some of them other countries and really seeing how so that's that's where we're heading. Excellent, yes. excellent. We are just so blessed by both of you and your initiative and um, just taking the time, the effort, your energy to uh, have us in convivencia or living mm -hmm. together as a yeah. community. 
Um, it's, it's an honor, it's a privilege, <clears throat> and I know that you'll do great exploits here in Boston, and I know it will spread like wildfire through this country because it's something that we need so badly across this country. Um, and I, I just thank you again for being here with me, um, for sharing with uh, our community the, the great things that are happening, that you know people are taking the initiative to address a lot of the issues that are happening in our community. And it's not just two people, but it's a whole community of agencies, mm -hmm. economic developments, it's our politicians, it's the mm -hmm. attorney generals, it's uh, religious and lay leaders business people that are coming together because um, of the understanding and the hurt, the pain of what violence can do to um, our community. And um, I just, I'm, I'm very happy to be here. And I, I just thank you again for um, being on the set with okay. me and, and, and giving thank me this hour and giving actually Boston this hour and beyond, I, I hope. And um, until next time, thank you. I'm gonna close out reading some. Um, oh no, I actually want to go over the um, interfaith youth leadership uh, that is happening at Brandeis University. Right. And <clears throat> that is going to happen July 26th to August 2nd um, at Brandeis University in Waltham, Mass. You can um, go on to Cooperative Metropolitan Ministries website and get more information. You can call 617-244-3650 or you can email ifti at coopmet.org. The website is www coopmet.org. Also, um, you can go on to Pathway to Redemption website or um, email uh, Robert Lewis at pathway724 at gmail.com and ask about the bikeathon, how you can be a part of that. Nice. Um, you can also email him about values over violence and how you can get involved. Um, to make change here in Boston. And I'm going to close out um, this evening. I just want to thank everybody, the whole crew. Thank you, crew, for being here once again tonight with me to make this possible. Um, thank you, BNN, for giving um, this community a platform and, and me a platform to be able to share with the community the shakers, the movers, the doers here in Boston. Um, the, this is uh, dedicated to my son. This is uh, poetry that I've been writing, um, which is also another way of me uh, dealing with a lot of the hurt and pain. Um, and um, this is called I Am. I am. I am wonderfully, beautifully made. I am made in God's image. I am God's creation. Uniquely me. Uniquely Patty Lee. Silly, giddy. Talkative, quiet, decisive, what superlative, lovely inside. I am versed, unrehearsed, I am aware, I am free, I am free, I am free to be me. Son's runny nose, now his runny, bloody heart. Black man child, black man child, why you make your mama cry? Why you gone, why you my beautiful black man child? Destiny too well known, but not to me. Oh, my sweet young black child, intelligent, well-versed, rehearsed, now in a hearse. My black man child, my black man child, here but just a wink of an eye, my beautiful burly guy, why you make your mama cry? Thank you again for joining me for Patty Lee TV. Good night. A vision I could see You made my dreams come true What would I do without you? In touch with who I am That's how you are